Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's Garoppolo's 49ers going up against Tom Savage's Texans. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Jimmy Garoppolo coming off his third career start and his first for the 49ers takes the field with the rest of the offense. Interesting game against the Bears. Not a lot of offense, but they did get the win, 15-14. to 14. He threw for 293 yards, had an interception, but guided him to a win. Put him in position for a lot of field goals, which Robbie Gold took care of, five of them, and they won 15-14. to 14. But this start for Garoppolo, were you surprised as me that it took this long for him to start after yeah, the trade? Yeah, I kept waiting for him to get out there, but they were going with Bethard. And how about this stat that you and I unearthed? Of the 44 quarterbacks ever to start a game for the Niners, his was the highest first game total of any of them with 293 yards. Wow. I'd say that definitely bodes well for the future, but the highest of any of them? Yeah. Joe Montana, yeah, think of the names. Steve Young, Y.A. Tittle, John Brody. That's pretty impressive. 17 yards on the game's opening play and a quick first down. Jimmy Garoppolo, the starter here, finally lured away from the Patriots. What are some things you like about J.G.? Well, I love his makeup, meaning obviously he has a physical ability. He can throw the football, but he's mentally tough as well. And he developed while he was there in New England. They actually trained him to be a starter, even though he wasn't getting any type of snaps. And this guy adapts and thrives with the ability to play against pressure. They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete. And the starting crew now for San Francisco. I've been a big fan of Carlos Hyde since his days at Ohio State. A big, strong, physical runner. Nimble feet. Excellent vision downfield. And what I like about him when he's at his best his ability to wear down a defense if he gets 20 or more carries in a game. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here we go now. Boom, they fake the give. Now Garoppolo looks to throw. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. On play action, now Garoppolo. And he's going to go down. The 
Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Jadevian Cloudy able to get outside the numbers and drop him for a loss of a yard. And there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. In his third year on is the punter, Bradley Pinion, to kick it away. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Out come the Houston Texans, and the offense will be led by Tom Savage. This crew lost last week to Tennessee, so now they're four and eight, struggling a bit. But Tom Savage in that game, 365 yards. He put it in the air 49 times. And to me, partner, he signifies the battle that Houston is putting up because they've lost a lot of guys during the year. They've lost four more key offensive players to injury during this last game. Yet Savage is still out there flinging it, keeping it close. They missed two field goals, and then Tom Savage did throw an end zone interception with about a minute left in the game that would have given them the lead. All right, here we go. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And they didn't wait long to take a shot there, that's for sure, but it falls incomplete. And it's second down. And let's take a look at the Texans offense. Will Fuller is one of the young flyers in the NFL and gets to top speed in just a couple of steps. So everyone has to respect the deep game because he'll blow past people in a hurry. But what that does is leaves open space underneath. He can take the short pass, turn it into a bigger game because he makes people miss. If he takes care of his hands and doesn't drop a pass or two in a game, he's going to be one of the best receivers in the league. Second and ten, Savage over the middle, and it's incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, and it's third down. And the 49ers on the defensive side of the football. However you measure DeForest Buckner, 6'7", 6'8", it really doesn't matter. He looks like a basketball power forward, and the one thing that he always focuses on and concentrates on is leverage. How does he drop his pad level so he can get down there and compete with the blockers of the NFL? An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Let's go. Three, let's go. Out of the gun, Savage. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Now the offense lining up first and ten. First carry for Lamar Miller. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second down following the run. They'll run it again with Miller. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. 
Savage on third. The catch made by Miller. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. This is the running back, Blue, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. And he'll be taken down at the 34. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. the gun. Here's Savage. Over the middle complete. It's Thompson. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Texans passing game in rhythm right now. Picking up another first. Tom Savage took over as a starting quarterback late in 2016 but got hurt. Unable to play in the playoffs. But he's back in trenches. Bill O'Brien's number one QB starting 2017. But Deshaun Watson, their number one choice, <laughs> lurking in the wings. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. Here we go now. Boom, landed. Ah! Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. to blue savage rush coming and he's taken down the rookie from stanford solomon thomas and it'll be second and goal well that was point counterpoint wasn't it they decided to throw for it on first and goal instead the defense counters with pressure and the defense wins getting a big sack Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They run with blue. And they get to him quickly here as he stops right around the 13. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. This offense so far on third down, a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They're looking at a third and goal here. All right, here we go. Boom, Savage from the shotgun snap. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. They'll give him eight on the play, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal.
Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And his kick is good. And it's now 3-0, Texans. So the opening drive for him here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball, put points on the board first, and let everyone start to celebrate. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? But you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> Hyde. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I think we saw some of the best qualities of Carlos Hyde on that run, able to pick up something there, being physical running the football, but I think he's got really good vision and great feet. He's going to be the key to this offense really being revitalized. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They run again with Hyde on first. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Jonathan Joseph is that wily veteran that you hunt on your team at all times. He's great in the locker room, fantastic on the field. And if you're a young guy, just watch how he prepares. What is he doing to combat old age? Pilates and yoga. That's extending <laughs> his career, making him more flexible, and still that guy who can go out there and cover the elite receivers in the NFL. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the pistol, they'll run with Hyde. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo, and he's unable to haul it in, so it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field, and that brings up fourth. Well, we keep stats on everything, don't we? This is one that you don't want to have. That's his second drop right here in the first quarter. Yeah, I was going to say, only in the first quarter. Certainly a ship that he wants to right quickly. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, it will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. 
The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe bashed it. <laughs> Super tough. Green, 39. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Again, it's Miller. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. The Texans on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and 15. Operating from the gun. Savage. And this is going to be incomplete. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what would you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, that's, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> Here now, Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter, to kick it away. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is brought in at the 21. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Garoppolo now, first down throw. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. In today's NFL, it might have surprised some people, but San Francisco was really, really hot to pick up Kyle Juszczyk from Baltimore, and they acquired him. Why? He can do everything. Block it? Yeah, of course he can. But he can catch the ball well in the backfield, too. Led all fullbacks in receptions the last two years and played in his first Pro Bowl a season ago. type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Let's go! Green, 39! On second down, Hyde. So 
So they'll give a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. Three nothing is our score. The NFL on EA Sports continues right after this message. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the 49ers in control of the football. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. On fourth down, Kyle Shanahan will send out the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 46. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through, and that will tie us at 3-3. we got to give some love to the man who just hit that field goal, Charles. Robbie Gold played his ex-mates, the Chicago Bears, last week, hit five field goals, all 15 points, and beat them. How about that? And you know the natural thought is, of course, motivation, the team that cut you. You're back to beat them in the city that you played for so many years for that team. But he handled it like such a pro afterwards. When asked about it, he said, listen, I just want to thank the Bears because they, when they cut me, it just made me rededicate myself to my craft. Remember, he kicked for a while for the Giants mm -hmm. last season and has found a home in San Francisco. Great answer, but you and I both know deep down, that ball going through the post to win the game. Felt good. Felt real good. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. On first down, it's Savage. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. with Miller. Now it's Savage. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Well, since that pass hit the ground, time to have some fun, Madden World. Marcus Peters, I know you saw this. You see him throw the flag into the stands last week against the Jets? A little bit of frustration because there had been a few pass interference calls, defensive holding calls against Kansas City. And this one happened in the end zone, so it set up another touchdown opportunity for the Jets. So Marcus Peters had had enough. None too happy. There's a flag on the ground. And he went ahead and expressed his displeasure <laughs> by chucking it into the stands. My favorite part, though, was watching the crowd in the stands. Oh, Once they were taking selfies They grabbed the flag, and they're all taking <laughs> selfies. First time has to be in NFL history, the fans taking selfies with a penalty flag. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. A play fake to Miller. Now Savage. And he's got Miller. Say goodbye to 
Braxton Miller. Touchdown, Houston. Braxton Miller, 61 yards. And the Texans are in for six. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Now the try here for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard, right at the line of scrimmage. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Again, it's high. Space to maneuver at the 40. And get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That good for 19 and a first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. across midfield not by much they'll mark it down at the 49 a gain of three second down this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post 
because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. the 20. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the eight-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically, but a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. Here we go now. Blue landing. Blue landing. Ah. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They'll run for it with Hyde. And he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. Carlos Hyde taking it in from a yard out. And the 49ers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. But well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was capped off by a Carlos Hyde touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. Touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives. So a very good flow right now offensively. Hard to slow them down, too, because they are locked in. Feel like the offense coordinator is a little bit ahead of the defensive guys right now. They're beating them to the punch with their play calls. They've got a nice rhythm they're locked into. How can the defensive guys come up with something that will disrupt that flow? That's what they're seeking right now. Well, it's been an exciting sequence to watch. First and ten, Savage. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. 
So they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. down carry now for Miller solid move but he's corralled just beyond the 40 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down well he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far and after that last run not much is going to change in that area he hasn't been able to get anything going and really the offensive line not helping him much To throw on second down to Savage. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Texans on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and eight. From the gun, Savage. And the third down pass falls incomplete. And it is true, you can draft the fastest, you can draft the most athletic guys, but if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second, would have been a tough catch though, falls incomplete. Here's Shane Leckler now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Garoppolo to the right side, caught by Salad. And he's brought down after a good gain. 23 yards on the play. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Garoppolo. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bernardrick McKinney in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, he really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here we go now. Three, 19. On second down, here's Garoppolo. Left side by Robinson. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield across the 45. That one goes for 24 yards.
tenth carry for Hyde. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Under four to play now. Clock running. Third down. Working from the gun. Garoppolo. Deep ball for Goodwin. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And here comes the Texans now. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. Here's Savage on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. On that incompletion, uh, gives us a chance to sneak in a little bit of an oddity last week. You hear all the talk of East Coast bias in the media. Well, there was some West Coast bias in Week 13. All five West Coast teams were winners. The first time that that's happened since 1976. Mm. And think about what these wins meant, too. The Rams leading the NFC West. The Chargers tied for the AFC West along with the Raiders, who also won. San Francisco won their second game, but both over brand-name teams. They beat the Giants, and they beat the Bears. And the Seattle Seahawks still lurking out there. They're also in contention for the NFC West crown. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Texans on third down. They've hit four of seven. This time they face a third and two. Play action. It's Savage. Going up top. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. Picked off inside the 10. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails... Less of a field goal attempt for him. Right, here we go. Three, 
So after the INT, it's Garoppolo. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to Houston after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Second and just one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Here's Garoppolo on first and 10. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Love the effort, love the dramatics, getting the feet down. How about a little step shuffle along the sideline there, almost like a great ballet dancer or a tap dancer. All for no gain, though? I was going to say, it's so pretty, <laughs> and it gets you nothing. <laughs> now Garoppolo throwing on second. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And he lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Yeah, holding on to the football is a big problem for the 49ers last year. Shouldn't surprise any of us, right? When you're 2-14, and 14, you probably will lead the league in fumbles as they did. How about they have 15, 15 last year? 15 of them, yep. And a 2-14 and 14 record, kind of indicative. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack here them here. Following the fumble recovery, Savage. That's caught right side by Anderson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. On first down, Savage. Miller on the catch over the middle. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. down throw coming. Savage hauled in by Anderson left side. Now before the second down play we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So the offense took the timeout looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Again throwing. It's Savage. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. 
But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Texans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time it's third and three. To the air again, Savage. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at it, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Now inside the red zone, Savage throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to his running back, Lamar Miller, and that'll bring up second down. Let's phrase this delicately, okay? Might have had a better option instead of throwing the football into double coverage. He was blanketed. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down, take the completion, keep moving. Second and 10, going with Savage again. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So after the sack of Savage, the Texans with a third and long fourth coming. From the gun, here's Savage. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So they kick it through to take the lead. There is a little bit of time left, though, here in the second quarter. And while they're concerned about not giving up a big return or giving up points themselves going into the half, how good do they feel, though, putting points on the board themselves right near the end of the first half? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. <laughs> and let's look at Carlos Hyde now. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. 
So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we send you now to Orlando to check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, LR. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Texans are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The 49ers won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Texans have it midway through one. Thomas is able to zero in on the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Third down at the 39. Miller is wide open, able to make the grab. It ends up working for a touchdown as they take the lead 7-3. Third down from inside the 10. On the run, here is Carlos Hyde. And he capped off the seven-play drive with a score. Score now tied at 10. Now first and 10. McKinney's got the sack here. This will go as a loss of 10. Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now the Texans' offense, they head back out to do battle here. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Second half begins with a run from Miller. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Second down, here's Miller. And an alley to run. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Savage on first, looking middle, and it's 
it's incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, with the breather, shift gears to the NFL coaching news that certainly everyone was talking about this week. New York Giants parting ways, Charles, with Ben McAdoo. And that's the first time that the Giants organization has made a move during the season since 1976 when they relieved Bill Arnsbarger of his duties as the head coach. They also, uh, also told the general manager his services were no longer needed. So they're going to clean house and start fresh again in 2018. What a tough way to go for the New York Giants. It's been an interesting year for them. It's just a franchise, obviously, with so much pride in their history. We'll see if they can turn it around. That one good for 33 and a first. Every team in the league always wants explosive plays, breakout plays, and even more so when it's your horse who's had a tough time during the game. Yeah, not that great in the first half. Maybe he can recalibrate here in the third and then carry that over to the fourth. I like that. Recalibrate. Strong. And now first down following that long game. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Here's Blue. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Second down following the run. Hurry up, here we go. Now it's Savage. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. The Texans on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and nine. Out of the gun. Savage. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Fuller. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the left hash, this from 39. And this one is right through. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So three field goals for him here. And this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Now a play fake here on first down. And 
Selleck here, left side. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Eight yards to go here on second down. Looking to throw, Garoppolo throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin, and that'll make it third down. The Niners on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 17, and it'll give him a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. and the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Now the movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Number, number. Following the penalty, it's Hyde. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Now, that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll run it now out of the gun. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Oh, 
from the gun. It's Garoppolo. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to get it to George Kittle. It's tight end. And it's third down. The Niners on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. Here we go now. Three. Looking to throw Garoppolo. And incomplete on the deep ball. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for San Francisco. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. Tom Savage ready to lead his troops back onto the field. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps, is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over, and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Miller. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. To throw on second down to Savage. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The Texans on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and nine. Savage from the shotgun snap. That's complete over the middle to Anderson. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Here's Shane Leckler now, standing right on his own five-yard line. That's taken on the 25. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one may be not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. out incomplete all right Brandon instead of breaking down you know that last play I gotta ask is that time of year because don't the fantasy football playoffs start aren't we ending the regular season and if so <laughs> how's your year going I know yeah in the Godden Family Football League it is starting next week I'm on a six game winning streak I'm nine and four going into the playoffs look at you are you, yeah. the number, are you gonna be the number one seed I'm not I'm the number three seed but with my win streak and where I'm at I'm kind of like Aaron Rodgers and the Packers last year except he's better looking and more successful so do you tell everybody to relax <laughs> or do you just guarantee victory oh I just guarantee there you go 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Now a play fake. Garoppolo. And this is going to be incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this will be taken at the 13. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And we focus on Lamar Miller as he heads back out there and gets set to go again on offense. So at the start of this game, it looked like the defense was wearing him down a little bit. Now you look at the numbers, that's kind of flip. Yeah, I agree with you totally. And his offensive line has really started to play well. And the best offensive line coaches that I've ever talked to, when they have great runners, you know what they tell their guys? Relax, you don't have to be perfect. Get as many guys as you can, but if you leave one free, the great runner will either make him miss or go through him. So don't worry about that. Don't, you don't have to be so precise. Go, Just go now. ahead, block some people, try to create some room, and allow him to go to work. Completion left side to Miller. A very solid gain of 27. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. He got 29 yards that time. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. In the red zone this time. Running left is Miller. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Yeah, that was the safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. look it's Miller and he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field so let's see about the call So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating the guys who just gave up that play. Savage now on second. Underneath for Miller. <laughs> A big hit. 
Knocked down sideways near the 25. It's a gain of five on the play, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. So completion on second down, that brings up third. Operating from the gun, Savage. And that is incomplete. So out comes the field goal team once more. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They start the drive with Hyde. They find some open field here. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. To throw is Garoppolo. They'll find Goodwin here on the right side. He'll get it to the 40. Broke a tackle there to get some extra yardage. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Play action. Now Garoppolo. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Tote for the afternoon workhorse. It's high. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. 
A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? A great play there, taking it in from seven yards away. And the 49ers are back within a score. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. And the lead is down to two. The drive summary that time, five plays. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Hunter Pinion now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tom Savage and the rest of his Texans offense heading back out there. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, though. He's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. Let's go! Blue Landy! Blue Landy! They go play action with Miller. Now it's Savage. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Anderson. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Second down, just one yard to go. Double tight, double tight. A play fake to Miller. Now Savage. And he finds a man on the crossing round. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A very solid gain of 27. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. 
And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here's a give to Miller. Lamar Miller. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller, 39 yards. And the Texans will add on to their lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball, too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Point after try, forthcoming. And that makes it a nine-point game. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And Lamar Miller caps it off with a touchdown run. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. tackled at about the 35. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. And he's got room. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. up second down and you just know when that play call came in their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield that's a lot of fun and they missed an opportunity looking to jam the receivers at the line here press coverage look defensively here we go now green 39 green 39 carry number 20 here for Hyde and he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves to James. 
I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there when you see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows the offensive line's gonna give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. First down, Garoppolo. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the eight-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They fake the give. Now Garoppolo looks to throw. And too much on that one. It's out of the back of the end zone incomplete. He was looking for Trent Taylor there. And that will bring up second down. You can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Now whistles here, and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. second down and it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six call it a pickup of seven and that is going to set up third and goal Gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Hang on now. Blue landed. Blue landed. Throwing now is Garoppolo. And he is gonna go down. Back at the 11-yard line. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Gold is able to put it through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. Pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start the drive from the 25. 
And the Texans set to come onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They begin with a run by Miller. And he's got some space here. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, this is my theme of Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless and without speech. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Play fake to Blue. Savage going deep for Hopkins. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Right, here we go. Three, Throwing on third down. It's Savage. Complete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Here's Shane Leckler now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And the 49ers getting set to trot out there. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Garoppolo on first and ten. Complete here. It's high. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure 
and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Garoppolo now. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down following the incompletion. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Looking to throw. Garoppolo. Out to the flat for Hyde. And he'll get up to the 43 yard line. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Fresh set of downs here. Shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And incomplete. A drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. For plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped the pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to? And maybe his rhythm confused. is just off. He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Here we go now. Green 39. Garoppolo looks to throw once more. His throw incomplete. The Niners on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and ten. Here we go now. Three and nineteen. Three and nineteen. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Four yards on the pick up there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. All right, here we go. Blue line ah! Now Garoppolo got to have this one. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now whistles here, and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. offense.
From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And some room to roam now. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Texans say they have it. They do. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. the fumble recovery. Savage. And the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. All right, Charles, help me out here. Fourth quarter, <laughs> you've got the lead and you run backwards into the end zone. You're just trying to do too much. I almost don't have words for it. But you know, every coach that we talk to talks about running backs or people running the football, running north-south, getting upfield. He went way in the opposite direction. And that's going to cost his team. Yeah, it cost him big time. Still leading, but it costs him. So free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Fielded at the 20. <laughs> and San Francisco gets set to go here. And last time the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Detroit! Detroit! After the fumble recovery, it's Garoppolo. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. here and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. Full start offense. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. Blitz coming and down he goes. Jadevian Cloudy in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So the sack of Garoppolo. And now what can they come up with on third and long? On play action, it's Garoppolo. 
He loses five full yards to bring up four. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 23. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now out comes Houston. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. And the defense in desperate need of a stop. They have to get off the field and get the ball back to their offense if they want a chance. Hey, let's go. 3 19. Miller will get it. He has been busy today. Lamar Miller. He's at the 40, 20, 10. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Texans will extend their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. A try here for the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper. Into the end zone for the touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And this will probably be the last play they can squeeze in here before the two-minute warning. Defense always has to be careful in this situation. A lot of teams like to take a shot. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Hey, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And now running right through it. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On second down, here's Garoppolo. He dumps it to Hyde. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Garoppolo on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Ten yards still left on second down. There's Garoppolo to throw. And Salak here, left side. And across the chalk, into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. Garrett Salak, 49 yards. And the 49ers have cut it back within a score. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Now, what can the Niners do as they face a big two-point conversion here? They'll try and run it up the middle. And he will get into the end zone to cut the lead a little bit further. So the deficit now three after the huge conversion, but they need to get the football back. So this is where special teams really comes into play because getting the ball back, it starts with this next kickoff. How do they get downfield? Either jar it loose or get the ball back themselves. That's going to be key for them. So they got their touchdown. Now down a field goal. Here comes the onside kick. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it, but even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. And now out comes Houston, and they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time, John. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play-action pass could very well be open. Running left is Miller. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They'll run it again with Miller. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. And the 49ers going to take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back.
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. third down they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first now a handoff to Miller and some big time hitting going on there he is knocked to the ground and play is stopped here timeout it's the defense calling the timeout here that'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside so the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Here comes Jimmy Garoppolo now to lead his offense back out there. Certainly, they want to win this game, but down three, they know what they need to do. Get in field goal range, at least have a chance to tie. And if you approach it the right way, you almost have a safety net. Knowing just a field goal gets it done, you don't press for the touchdown, but you take it if the opportunity comes, if the opening's there. Someone slips in the secondary and you get a big play. But otherwise, get the three, put that on the board, and try to extend the game. They'll be trying to muster three. Of course, they'd love the score to win it. He'll look to throw, and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Back to throw. Throw left side caught by Goodwin. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now whistles here, and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. Ball start, offense. executed well there and it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again they just did it on the last play looks like they want to finish this one off so the defense has put them in a tough spot it's second and long Hang on now. Green, 39. he's back to throw and incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. They'll look to throw. And Robinson with a big catch. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Let's go. Blue Blue ah! To throw is Garoppolo. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Well, that wasn't a real confident throw, but I think we can understand why with the way this game has gone. He's been harassed, moved out of the pocket, sacked a bunch of times, makes it tough to get set and throw. Yeah, pressure's been relentless. It was relentless there, a dangerous throw downfield. Here we go now. Green, 39. Garoppolo the throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Back to throw, Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. But still need one completion for field goal range. And just think about what they're going over in the huddle right now. Make the catch, get out of bounds. That's going to be tough to do. So make the catch, get up to the line of scrimmage, and clock it to have one last shot. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And now the Texans want to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And Gold is able to put it through. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. So in the final minute, they turn it over to their kicker to get him back to even, and he does not disappoint. Brandon, do you think the pressure ever gets to this guy? Because I sure don't. That was pretty smooth right there. But I tell you, he'd better not rest on his laurels because there's a good chance they may need him again if this game goes to overtime. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Let's go. Now a 
20th carry of the game for Lamar Miller. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Set for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day. But I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. Again, running right at time. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Not a bad idea to start overtime. Feed the hot hand. And understand that when you're feeding that hot hand, everyone else is pretty much in agreement on it. You know, a team looks at their game and says, all right, who's playing really well? Let them touch the football, and we'll do our job to help him along. Second down following the run. They'll give to Hyde, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So here we go, first and ten now. throw of OT for Garoppolo. He's going to sling this deep downfield. He's got it at the 15. A huge play there in overtime. 46 yards. Explosion plays always break the back of a defense in overtime to put him in the red zone. That was huge. I like your description there because when you get an explosion play, now people are really scrambling on defense. Now they're looking to each other. Who's going to step up? Who's going to make a play? Offensive guys have the momentum. Now they're in the red zone. They've got to be thinking attack, trying to get it into the end zone. here to his running back. He takes this down to about the 12 for a gain of three. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling, because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Now they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Working from 
in the gun. Garoppolo under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And Gold is able to put it through. And with that, they will move out in front by three. All right, so they're able to put three on the board here on the opening drive of OT, and now it'll be up to their defense to try and see this one out. So remember now, a field goal on this next drive would get us to sudden death. Any kind of turnover or turnover on downs would end the game, as would any touchdown. So this one's still very much up in the air. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Savage, first throw in overtime, setting up the screen for Miller. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're either throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. Savage now on second. And it's incomplete. They were trying to get the connection with a former Buckeye, Braxton Miller. And now it's third down. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. From the gun, here's Savage. Caught left side, Hopkins. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And here's your ball game. Down three in overtime, but they're going for this thing on fourth down. All right, here we go. Blue and they'll run for it with Miller. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Give him eight on the play, and they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Well, I'll tell you, this guy's had a monster game on the ground. So if you're going to go for it on fourth and short, it can't be any secret he's going to get the ball. And sure enough, he's going to add to his total here as they pick up the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Savage. 
And his throw is incomplete. Second and ten, Savage. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Fifteen yards, the Texans pick up the first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So the offense has it first and 10. Savage from the shotgun snap. And that'll be incomplete. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try to defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third oh, down. Savage now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. Here we go now. They snap it to Savage. And it is incomplete. Bill O'Brien rolls the dice, but to no avail. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint in overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goes from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, but he pushed it through. <laughs> Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.